I wanted to welcome you here today uh, to share something that we've been experimenting on lately. Uh, you may have seen a little sneak peek during the preview, um, but this is something that uh, I personally am very excited to uh, start sharing with you. Uh, so first, a little introduction about me. Uh, so my name is Zach. Uh, I've been with Oculus for about four months. I'm the product manager on what you know as Dash, uh, which is part of the new core 2.0 uh, software update. Um, and basically what Dash is, is the user interface that powers uh, the Rift UI. Uh, and I guess to, to kind of preface this, initially this presentation was going to be given by my lead developer, Yuri, but sadly he had a family matter. So one of the first times I'm seeing this slide deck, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit. Uh, so earlier today you heard about hybrid apps uh, being announced at Oculus. Um, basically the idea was that you know, with a 2D application, um, you know, if you're a developer and you're trying to figure out like, should I play with VR, should I not? How do I extend like my UI, my frameworks, everything over to the uh, VR side? Um, it's really hard. You know, you have to either have some game development experience or have some uh, ability to either hire or train up or, or spend the time to actually learn how to, to build in a 3D framework. Um, you sometimes you have to completely refactor or rebuild your UI. Um, sometimes some of the popular application development frameworks like they don't work, right? Like Qt does not easily transpose over from a 2D surface into a VR side. And we said, you know what? This is something that we should really kind of look into and see what we can do to help. Um, and so through all this and through the fact that we have been spending over the last year uh, building out Dash in itself, we realized that like we've actually built a lot of really cool things uh, with Dash. And with that, a lot of those things actually can help solve a lot of these problems. Um, and so we said, hey, like since we've already built it, why not, why not figure out how can we uh, extend this over to developers and themselves? Uh, next slide. Cool, which is why it brings us to what we're calling hybrid apps, um, which basically allows you to extend your 2D application and help bring it into 3D um, without having to do a complete refactor. Uh, some of the big target use cases, as I mentioned earlier, you know, developers just want to experiment in VR. You know, we realize that the user base is growing, but it's still not to where we'd want it to be. Um, and so it can be very expensive for a, a smaller studio to, you know, spend the time and effort to have to build all the way in there. You know, a lot of the times you want to run, be able to run really quickly. And if you're building in VR directly, you know, it's a little bit slower of a time than being able to just update a 2D UI and pipe it through. Um, you know, you have a lot of complex use cases and a lot of workflows that your, your users and developers actually don't want to have to relearn. Um, and so for things like productivity tools, 3D design tools, you know, this really kind of simplifies and enables you to bring everything up to the forefront. So let's talk a little bit about hybrid apps. Um, great. So we have this awesome little animation, uh, which basically will show off the idea that, you know, as a user, you're on your 2D app. Um, instead of having to quit your application, open VR, open a separate application, put your headset on, pick up your touch controllers, and then jump in, we're allowing uh, applications themselves to, to be able to target and uh, declare focus for the uh, VR state so that you can jump easily in and out without having to do anything more than just take your headset on and take it off. Um, you know, within that, like every additional, uh, every single window that your 2D application has in your HWIN um, can automatically be declared and passed through to uh, VR. You know, the input, we're automatically handling that for you. So the ability for us to, you know, understand if you're focusing on you know, your background 3D uh, scene, or if you're actually touching a 2D uh, mesh or, or, uh, or window, um, we're handling that automatically. And you get the really cool avatar hands that we've already developed um, internally, all for free. Um, so here's a short video kind of explaining in a little more depth. Um, so here we have uh, a user that's basically manipulating, um, using a 2D window that's being passed through directly into Dash uh, with our, our robot Toby. Um, from our initial uh, first contact application. And as you can see here, the, the user is very easily able to kind of move around, uh, you know, scale and, and move the 3D object, but at the same time, you know, they're already using that 2D, app, or 2D uh, surface that enables them to, you know, kind of continue their workflow. And so it's not relearning a new step, it's just the same thing you're always used to, just in a new form, um, all throughout your piece. And this is a cool little video we made to basically show how that works. Um, it took us like 22 tries to get this, but I was pretty excited with the, the final side. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, so let's dig a little bit deeper into like how a 3D uh, application can move into uh, the hybrid app state. 
So you have your 2D workflow, you know, you can manipulate, you can, you can play around and, and kind of do all these pieces. Um, what is this? All right, now we're good. Uh, so yeah, so let's talk a little bit about like some of the underpinnings of how Dash is enabling these things to work. You know, you have three core set features. You have the floating desktop windows, uh, which come from your virtual desktop uh, right inside of Dash. Um, you have your hands and raycast, so you can actually control and uh, manipulate your objects um, in real time. And then at the same time, you also have the automatic ability for us to be able to detect whether you're touching the 3D backdrop and also like your desktop window, all without um, a whole bunch of uh, rework. So your dash panels, which are what we're mentioning above, um, this is something that we actually spent a lot of time working and, and optimizing for your virtual desktop. Uh, we do things like, uh, uh, you know, setting up some high fidelity like SDK layers to make sure that you're actually getting um, as close to real uh, uh, visibility of your text and your layouts and everything like that. Um, you know, you can actually move and drag these windows in real time. So if you don't want it one place, you can pull it over to the side. You know, these have infinite scaling opportunity, so they don't have to be one specific size set. Um, and on top of that, we've actually built our cylinder um, based positioning so that it curves the window slightly so that it's always facing the user and it's very easy to use. Um, and so all these things that like we spent a lot of time, you know, tweaking, optimizing, and with great uh, community feedback, we believe it's in a really good spot to start opening up to, to developers themselves. Um, is this a video? Oh, there was a video underneath, but I guess it's not working. Perfect. Um, cool. There we go. Awesome. Now we have Oculus Desktop itself. Um, so this is something that we've spent a lot of time optimizing uh, as well. So we have low-level hooks that we've built in to actually um, uh, that are provided to us by GPU vendors to enable like low latency composition of the individual desktop windows or, or virtual windows. Um, and by doing this, uh, I don't know if, if you've ever tried to use like a, an application like Fraps or something like that to actually stream your desktop. It's latent. You know, you have choppy frame set. This actually allows a perfect one-to-one -one, um, push without actually having that high overhead of additional. Uh, uh, GPU compute time. Um, on top of that, you know, we have a really good uh, ability to basically support any like native desktop window because we're simulating hardware input and keyboard input directly into that window. Um, and so by doing that, you know, you don't have to remap or set up a, a separate listener just to do that. As long as your application can accept uh, hardware input, it's already going to work. Um, and it's something that can always be available to the user even in like game context. So you can overlay this on pretty much anything. And so because we spend all this time optimizing, making sure that this is performant, it works, um, it pipes everything through, you have complete control over it, uh, we're opening it up to, to developers themselves. Um, so I was going to quickly uh, run through some of the, the basic API calls. This is all, as I'll say, completely work in progress. Um, we have no uh, set release time for this yet, but I wanted to start uh, showing this off so we can get our gathering feedback and, and really start to see what uh, everyone wants to do with it. Um, you know, your first ability is basically you can show a desktop window. Um, and instead of actually showing your whole application, we're actually allowing you to set subrecs inside of your UI so you can segment your UI into separate pieces um, or separate floating panels within uh, your 3D space. And so instead of having to just say, OK, well, all I'm seeing is my, my 2D application and it's just sitting on the side, um, we can allow you to dynamically show and hide those to actually create new use cases and display only what's relevant to the user at that one time. Um, and at the same time, you can also set the pose. So you know you can tilt it, you can you can uh, modify it, and you can also set the X, Y, and Z of that dynamically, so that if you want something moving around, um, or if you want it to, to fly out of the user's, user's way while they're doing specific tasks, it's totally feasible. Um, the second size, uh, well, I guess this is where we're setting the actual recs. Um, once again, you can you can allow the the mouse input. You can um, completely stop. Sometimes you just want to have like a reference image that has absolutely no ability to be interacted with by the user, or you, know, you want a fixed window that will not be able to be manipulated by the user. These are all very easily toggleable on and off based on setting some bools. Um, and it's also the size, right? So you can dynamically set the size. So if you have a, a, uh, a panel on your, on your 2D application that you know, will either shrink or, or grow, you can actually allow the, the application to set via or per frame to actually extend that or bring that out in a very fluid motion so that it's very extensible. Um, and the last part is the hybrid input mode. So this is where I think this really starts to shine. So right now, inside of Dash itself, you have the ability to pin a desktop window, close Dash, and it'll be there, and it'll be stuck there. However, the application underneath 
um, isn't capable right now of being able to detect whether you're pointing at that window or if you're pointing at the scene behind it. Um, with the hybrid input mode, we're allowing your application to define based on um, the, the ray cast or, or the touch that the user's doing, which application is actually trying to be hit. And so by doing that, we allow this seamless transition between um, using the background and using the, the panels themselves. You know, with our panels that we've built, like, they're, you know, we already uh, can simulate like a hardware accelerated mouse cursor. We have you know, low-level input injection to the operating system, so everything is low-latent and, and works really well. And it pretty much supports any hardware perif peripheral that you're going to want to plug in. Um, and at the same time, we also have a really good raycast or the, the laser that's coming out of your finger to actually point and touch on each object. And so this is all coming standard. All you have to do is flag and turn it on, and it'll work. Um, but we've also built this in an extensible way to make sure that if you have your own uh, you know, avatar hands or if you have a certain angle or pieces that you want to do with your own raycast, like, that's completely extensible as well. Um, these are just options that you can, you can bring in. Um, so here's a little bit of look into, into how that would work. Once again, um, all you have to do is set your hybrid app focus. You, know, you uh, throw in your controller type. You, know, you can set your state. And then basically, you're just setting your pose and your point uh, for the raycast to be able to actually say, OK, I'm looking at this. Now it's active. I'm pointing behind it. Now it's not active. Um, and that's it. And then if you want to show hands, it's once again, it's a bull to show them, turn them on and off. Uh, so yeah, so this is a really exciting feature that we're really, uh, really happy to be bringing to you and, and talking about. Um, but I'd like to open up the floor to questions. And I actually brought one of my developers, Bogdan, um, with me to answer any questions.